Welcome back to Barn Bill Beaters. This video was long overdue, but I promise you I was working on this JD's Garage CNC plasma table the entire time. This table is roughly 28 by 30 inches and it can be built for around $500. In this video, we will be fabricating, building, welding, wiring, and lastly, testing out the CNC table. This video is mostly a time lapse of myself building the JD's Garage CNC plasma table. While you watch me work, let me tell you a little bit about the plans, the issues I ran into, and my overall thoughts. These plans are readily available online for $20 to $25. The plans, although I did run into some issues, are pretty well documented and I think 90% of people could easily follow them and have a well working machine. These plans include engineering drawings of each part, STL files to 3D print, written instructions on how to assemble, pro tips, troubleshooting guides, and the upgrades they have added are included free of charge, even if you previously purchased this prior to the release. My favorite thing about these plans is normally a CNC plasma table is outside a lot of hobbyist budgets, but this table can be made for around $500. That is, if you are able to supply the 3D prints, and of course, this does not include the plasma cutter itself. Don't have a 3D printer? No worries, JD Garage sells the completed prints and metal brackets for a pretty reasonable price. Be warned though, there is a little bit of welding that is needed to complete the table, so hopefully you have the skill set or know someone who does. Before we get too far into the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We have a majority of the CNC plasma table parts laid out all in front of me for easy access. For right now, we're going to start with the Y axis portion of the build. For that, we have the horizontal Y axis tubes, we have the Y axis plates, and lastly, since I actually don't know how to build this, we are going to be following the Y axis instructions. This project took me a lot longer to complete than what I initially expected, hence why I haven't uploaded it in a while. I found the project much more difficult than I initially expected. This was due to the instructions, but I don't want to fault JD's garage. I printed them out and may have gotten them slightly out of order. I might mess that up. Oh no, I put those on backwards. Fug. <sighs> we just got the table completely torn back down and put back together because I ended up flipping this bar over onto the other side, which messes up the complete rest of the assembly. Now we're back good, and we can focus on getting the legs and the other axes bolted on and have something that actually resembles a table. As you saw, I measured everything out, center punched it, and slowly stepped up my drill bit sizes as appropriate. However, when assembling, my holes did not line up perfectly and I ended up having to hog out the holes to get them to fit. I used a hand drill the entire project, which of course can walk if it isn't perpendicular to the material. A drill press would have been a better option, although I don't have one. I'm assuming you would not run into this issue if you had a drill press. Regardless, it was an easy fix. Towards the end of the project, I was definitely slacking. All those little issues, trips to the hardware store, and whatever else popped up ended up eating away at my drive. To be honest, as I talk about this, I am procrastinating going out there to dial in the machine. At least I'm being productive towards the video though. However, I pushed myself to go out there and piece away at it. Four months later, other than tuning it in for various thicknesses, the machine is done. Here are my overall thoughts on the machine. One, I love that JD's Garage offers this as it allows hobbyists to get into the CNC plasma game on a budget. It uses Fusion as your CAD software and to write the G-code, which is both free and loads of YouTube videos to teach yourself with. I had experience with CAD, but zero experience with writing G-code. Luckily, Fusion does 90% of the work for you. Two, I have to bring this up, but this is a complete ripoff of the Langmuir Crossfire. If you look up a picture of JD's Garage and Langmuir's table, they literally look the same. I'm honestly not sure how they aren't in legal trouble, but hey, that's not my issue and I'll take advantage of the deal. Three, there is room for improvement. Firstly, the gantry x-axis would have been better if it was supported on both sides. I have seen a lot of people add a caster wheel which rides along the table frame to do this, and in the future I will probably do something similar. Secondly, although this may add some expense, this would be made easier with extrude aluminum and appropriate hardware, similar to how some 3D printers are. Thirdly, some of the brackets they have you fabricate, I ended up just modeling in CAD and 3D printing. So far, they seem stout enough for the job, but now that the machine is up and running, I may end up cutting these out of steel if I see the need. 
Number four, since this machine is made for the hobbyists who probably have never touched a CNC table prior, it would have been beneficial for them to list some of the amp and feed rates for the table. Obviously, this is going to differ depending on what material, the material condition, the plasma cutter, and some other variables, but a baseline starting point would have been nice. Number five, and lastly, although I think this table is fantastic, if I could rewind time, I would have just purchased the Langmuir Crossfire. Although the design is nearly identical, yet about $1,000 more for a total of around $1,500, it comes ready to cut after assembly, you have customer support, and also has a good following with many people readily available to assist you in case you need it. Although $1,500 is a good chunk of money, I still think a lot of hobbyists could afford it if they really do need or want a CNC. It may just take a bit of savings. So far, I am happy with my JD's Garage CNC table. I am thinking this will do everything I want it to and I'm excited to put it through its paces. This will really open up what I'm able to fabricate if only I had this when I was making body mounts. It would have sped up the process a lot. I'm always looking for ways to save a buck, and well, this time it bit me. I bought a slightly oversized water pan, which does not fit the table dimensions, with the intention of cutting an inch out and welding the seam, all to save $50. Who doesn't love welding stainless, right? Well, this was probably the most difficult thing I've ever welded. No matter what I did, I kept blowing through the material, resulting in me patching the hole with filler, and as a result, putting even more heat into the material than I should. After I finally welded the seam, it was apparent. I had warped the entire pan. I tried to stretch the material out as welding shrinks the metal, but I was unsuccessful and ended up buying the pan JD's Garage recommends. So instead of saving $50, I ended up spending $100 more. As I waited for my new pan to come in, I focused on finishing up the wiring. I ran the wires through the conduit pole and started crimping on pins, pushing them into connectors and finally plugging them in. Unfortunately, I was in the, this project is taking too long, let's just get it done stage, and unfortunately did not film it. After all was wired, I started working on the bed plate, as I like to call it, or the material that the metal actually rests on. This is the only thing I did not see documented in the JD Garage plans. I ended up grabbing some eighth inch by two inch flat bar stock, cut some grooves, which allowed each piece to nest into each other and tack them together. Finally, it was time to fill the water pan with water, turn on the welder, connect my laptop, and make some test cuts, followed by some real cuts. This is my first cut on some actual material, so I'm pretty nervous. It's quarter inch material for some of the brackets that we need for the truck. So here we go, and hopefully it comes out well.
We finally cut out our very first actual part other than test cuts. So this is a part to a future video. It obviously has been cut out. However, the backside has a lot of dross on it. Hopefully it's in focus so you can see it. So there is some tuning that needs to be done to reduce or eliminate it as much as possible. However, I have no idea what I'm doing. So it's just gonna be trial and error over and over and over again, but at least we cut out a part. This is a future part to a future video. So we will continue to keep cutting out these pieces and hopefully we see some improvements with our draws. And if not, I guess that's just more cleanup for me. So enjoy the time lapse and I'll try to get some close up footage. This project, although it took much longer than anticipated, will allow me to create much more interesting pieces than what I can create using a bandsaw. And it will also speed up my fabrication process. Although there are some flaws in the design, there are workarounds scattered across the internet. I think any hobbyist would be more than happy to add this tool to the shop. I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll catch you in the next one.